morning. It's um, Sunday the 12th of July um, and <laughs> Leicester's still in lockdown, hence the lockdown hair. Um, I should have really worn a hat today. Um, I'm out quite early, I think it's only just relatively early, it's 9am um, and I've just come up to Bead Park um, which is uh, quiet at the moment, I'm sure later on as the sun seems to be coming out today and it's a little bit warmer uh, we'll be quite busy with um, with lots of people um, I think uh, you know this this second lockdown is really much tougher than the first and it's kind of annoying if you kind of get the sense that um, other people around the country are starting to do things. You see pictures on Instagram and Twitter where people are really going out and about and doing things and meeting up with people. Um, whereas here, everything is still closed. So the, the cafes, the bars, the non-essential shops. But then again, it kind of also develops its own rhythm and its own pace. Um, so it's kind of, it does make you appreciate uh, some of the things that you've got around you in in the neighbourhood and the space that you live and you know the town centre I count the town centre in Leicester as my neighbourhood because it's 15 minutes walk away and actually the the calm and the peace and the quiet and it's nice on a Sunday morning because there's hardly any cars about um, and it does feel quieter uh, whereas typically uh, the, the traffic really hasn't dropped as much uh, in the second lockdown here in Leicester as it did in the first one um, but it, it you know it's it's you take your moments where you can if you're up and out early uh, I've got a thing at the moment I'm waking up at 6am and falling asleep just after 11 um, which is alright you know you can make the most of the morning um, it's just a pity the last couple of weeks have been the weather's not been great it was raining and it was really quite cold um, but hopefully we might get a few weeks where we get some consistently warmer weather and it hovers around 20 degrees you know if we, if we can get a few weeks in July and August uh, I think people will be more satisfied but my goodness the time is racing ahead and it's really you know where, where's it going you know where's the where, where, where are the weeks going past um, you know, it's um, <laughs> it's like a, a, a an alternative reality um, where you don't know what is up and what's down. Um, and and yesterday, I have to admit, I was in a very very uh, lousy mood. Um, it, it it you know, if it wasn't for the patience of the people that are <laughs> that, that I, I, I'm with. Uh, then I, I think I probably would have thrown throw my rattle out of the pram yesterday. It was just one of those days where I couldn't get into a good gear. Um, early on in the day, anyway. Later on, it was a it was a bit easy. I think I always like that phrase that Carl Jung uses, which is you know we don't have emotions. Emotions have us. And it was yesterday was really just getting to the point where you know my emotions were were, were bubbling away. And sometimes you've just got to ride that out. You can't do anything about it. You're going to feel frustrated or, um, you know, kind of, um, you know, the fear is that you're, you're, you're left out, you know, that you're, you're abandoned. Um, and there is a bit of a feeling, you know, here in Leicester at the moment that we're being abandoned uh, and used as a, a kind of test case. But there's no, you know, even, even from kind of the mayor and the councillors, there's no, they, you know, they're, feeling the same way they they feel as if they've been abandoned and you know the the government is not providing proper information uh it's not relating to people and talking to people in a way that makes sense and is meaningful uh to them it's very you know basic information and we're expected somehow to get these magical messages that you know you, you, you see the nasty side of it, you know, that you know, people aren't washing their hands uh, and people aren't uh, following the social distancing rules. Well, you know, my experience is generally people are and they're doing it as well as people might be expected to do elsewhere. But what the government's not done <coughs> is given people the practical support to, to, to face the challenge. So one of the challenges, one of the big issues in Leicester is, yeah, there's a high level of people who are migrants and they have on their, if they've got a, a you know, um, 
if they got an immigration card, a residency card, a temporary one, then it says no public funds. So you can't apply for any kind of um, money from the government to see you through to, you've got to work, otherwise you don't eat, otherwise you don't, um, you know, you don't um, have a roof over your head. So that's one of the reasons why people have been carrying on working in factories and warehouses and working in conditions that really aren't uh, uh, suitable. Uh, but then to blame people for that, and there is a sense that, you know, kind of people are being blamed for it rather than people give, being given the practical help and support. And those decisions that the government's made to ignore, and, you know, it was one of the things that was really, you know, remarkable when Boris Johnson was at the... Um, the liaison committee with all of the chairs of the the different parliamentary committees when he when he wasn't he said he wasn't aware that you know people who are on visas don't get any recourse to public funds well as from a public health issue it's cheaper just to pay people the money give give people a universal basic income um and then say you know for three months four months take it you know take it each day at a time each week at a time and pay people so that they don't have to go and work in unsafe conditions uh, and that you can get the the virus under control but I've, I've no faith that that's what this government's capable of and I think a lot of people feel the same um, because you know the, the numbers really don't seem to be coming down where we you know every day you know 120 people it drops sometimes to maybe 20 or something like that but then it goes back up to 120 um and which is more than the you know the the the, the excess deaths to use that terrible phrase is more than the, the the whole of europe combined 700 million people versus 70 million people um and and we've got a, a shockingly bad record and the incompetence from the government is just you know we we you know it beggars belief and I'm, I'm i'm why do british people accept you know accept it so meekly so it's you know it's 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 not an easy thing to live through you kind of feel a bit isolated i chatted with some and and, and seen some uh, uh local businesses online who are really worried uh about how they'll survive and what this involves and what they'll be able to do uh, in the future um, because it's on a knife edge and the platitudes and the dismissiveness and the kind of oh it's over you know we, we, we've done that now we've moved on to something else Brexit which which is another you know disaster in the making uh, is is just gonna really um, push people over the edge I think um, and we've got to be really careful that we don't we offer people a sense of hope and a sense that you know the, the, this is part of the problem about the communication. It's been very instructional. It's like command, command and control. It's like a head teacher in an old-fashioned school, which which probably fits in with the government's model since they went down the, you know, the the, the ridiculous academy approach, and that where you know you you just follow the rules and you're told what to do. But there's no sense of belonging, there's no sense of participation, there's no sense of engagement, there's no sense of civic empowerment in, in any of this. Um, and, and that's an alternative way that this could be managed and dealt with. Whereas at the moment, I think this government is very um, one-dimensional, cloth-eared, and really rather, um, you know, uh, in, incompetent. And they've they've... You know, Boris Johnson has surrounded himself with incompetence um, and they're very good at giving a PR gloss um, but they're not very good at actually uh, looking at how this would work. You know, they, they've, they've adopted a uniform approach so they're, they're kind of assuming that everybody, their, 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 their median measure if you like politically are people who live in market towns uh, in the wealthy southeast. Um, who have a, a you know kind of assets based around property, uh, uh, pensions, uh, investment portfolios, flirt with going to sending their kids to private school, maybe have done, maybe you know you know look at the academies for state schools, you know grammar schools, that kind of stuff, and that's what they regard as the norm. Uh, and everybody else who doesn't fit within that you know kind of narrow band of normality. Um, can, can can sod off and I think the other 
thing that this exposes is, is the set that they they're just the high levels of centralization in the uk you know, it's really nice to see the, the the Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland pursuing things for themselves. And, and that will have a long-term impact on the way politics works in the UK. But England seems to be this, um, you know, it's this little empire, the last remaining place where those who are fixated with the glories of the British past can play out their fantasies and that they can command and control uh, the British state, the English state, in order to be able to, to meet their political requirements. And it's not about uh, disempowering the centre and empowering people locally. It's all about control. It's all about ensuring that they follow, that people follow a model uh, of engagement that's set down for them. Uh, so the politics of this, you know, are really um, uh, not very complicated, actually. You know, it's a, it's a group of people who think they know better, and what they won't do is give uh, power to people who can make decisions locally and for local people to take responsibility for the, for what happens and how that works. So a devolution approach and I'm a distributionist so it's a, you know, the idea of that which can be done at the lowest level should be done at the lowest level but you're never going to hear those words from anybody in this government if anything they're pulling things tighter and tighter into the centre and controlling things which is why they want to employ all, all these data managers um, because they think they can run it on a, a, a like an information system like a supermarket operates so the guys just uh, emptying the bins over there they're, I have to really give credit to the city council and the way that people have managed and run the parks they, they they are doing a fantastic job they've they've kept them clean uh they keep them tidy uh sometimes in difficult circumstances as well but uh, you know it's it's uh it's really positive to see that the parks in leicester are an asset to the city and they're actually starting to be used more more i think people are starting to appreciate them more Anyway, I've rambled on for a bit. What I'll do is I might go and sit somewhere else. I'm going to go for a wander into town. Uh, I've got some coffee in my bag. Uh, I might just uh, uh, record a, a second uh, set of thoughts um, and, uh, and then post them up online later. So uh, uh, for now, just speak to you in a bit. Hello again. Um, I've been having a wander around Leicester uh, this morning, just chatting uh, to people on the phone. Met up with my friend Damien, had a coffee, um, and now I'm going to head back. Um, it was interesting. The um, park here is called Castle Park, and during the lockdown throughout the summer, there's it's like a couple of tables there, benches where uh, people have been gathering to drink. Middle-aged men. Uh, bald heads and beer bellies have been gathering to have a, a, a can of carling together. Uh, but it, interestingly, the police were out today and this, this kind of moved people on. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that they would be... I mean, it's a good question, really. Will they be going back into the pubs when, they're, when they reopen? Or are they going to uh, enjoy, uh, keep enjoying the weather? Um, and, and, the, and the outside experience, um, who knows? Um, but it'll be nice to see them you know, do what you like in the privacy of your own home, but I think in parks and gardens around the city, uh, their family spaces and that gets you know, people using the, the, the bushes for uh, urinals um, shouldn't, be, shouldn't be encouraged or tolerated. Uh, so the area that I'm going to walk through now is, uh, it's called Leicester Castle, and it's taken, it was kind of used, used by the university now for their business school, uh, and it's the site of the old Leicester Castle. Um, are just here so the building's not particularly old but there are some old parts of it there's the uh, uh, the kind of keep uh, here and then the lane uh, 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 
down the road, which I'll show you in a, in a minute, <coughs> uh, is quite one of the kind of older areas. In the 1960s, a lot of the redevelopment that took place with bringing in the ring roads actually demolished a lot of uh, the kind of more, the older quarters in Leicester. Uh, so a lot of the heritage was lost, um, but it's kind of nice to see some, some um, nods towards it. Um, it. Leicester's not, you know, people have this picturesque image of Leicester. It's sold internationally as this, you know, it's the heart of England. And it's, um, you know, it's, it, it, it can trace its roots back to Roman times. Um, and there is still evidence of, you know, kind of Roman uh, ruins uh, that have been uh, found. Uh, this is the Castle Mott, um, which is the kind of remains of part of the castle as well. Uh, this is the church here is St. Mary de Castro. Uh, the spire on that uh, nearly collapsed a few years ago, so they had to take it down. They're trying to raise funds to, to rebuild it. Uh, and then the area where we're going to look at for a second, you can, you can see De Montfort University in the background, but I think most of these buildings are now leased or owned by the university. It's a cobbled street. Uh, and they've opened a little bar here, but it's a lot of use for offices and things like that. So it's it's kind of, it's not like York or Whitby or, you know, some of the places that have got extended areas of historical interest. A lot of Leicester can be quite brutal um, in terms of its, its, you know, the modern architecture, like a lot of cities, uh, Coventry, uh, Birmingham, uh, which we're now rolling back from and uh, re redeveloping and, and reinventing as spaces that are, are more comfortable for people uh, to use uh, and yeah it's, uh, it's it's pleasant enough so this is what they call now the, the castle inn uh, which sells I think a couple of kegs of beer and it gets about half a dozen people sat in there it's very small uh, uh, and then there's the keep the old gate house to the keep uh, which then brings you on to uh, the university campus uh, but yeah so that's been my uh, Sunday morning in Leicester uh, it's been a bit like this kind of groundhog day uh, wandering about over the last few weeks uh, I'll need to have a shave tomorrow um, if you want to follow me on Twitter I'm on Rob W Media and on Instagram on Rob W Media or visit robwatsonmedia.net uh, and I'm on YouTube as well uh, so uh, hopefully this is where you're seeing this video uh, but I'll try and get out again in the week and you know share some thoughts and offload some of my anxieties about what's going on with the second never-ending lockdown here in Leicester. Bye!